Hong Kong, also known as the Pearl of the Orient. But recent economic numbers don't paint a shiny gem of a city. It's in pretty dire state. Hong Kong has had a lost half decade between 2019 and 2023. But on the horizon are plans to integrate Hong Kong to southern China, a grand economic zone called the Greater Bay Area. The idea is basically the whole is more than the sum of the parts. Through complementing each other, the whole area will grow faster and bigger. But in the last decade, cities like Guangzhou and Shenzhen have overtaken Hong Kong's economic performance. So, I am on a journey across the region to find out what exactly is the Greater Bay Area and... Will integration raise Hong Kong's fortunes higher or will it be overshadowed by the rapid rise of the mainland coastal cities? I'm at the Hong Kong West Kowloon high-speed train station. While most people in Hong Kong are rushing to their workplaces, I'm headed somewhere else. This is the first stop in my journey across the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area, or simply known as the Greater Bay Area. This is the high-speed train from Hong Kong that takes me to downtown Guangzhou City in the heart of the Greater Bay Area. The Greater Bay Area is planned as an integrated economic zone, linking nine major cities in the Guangdong province, with the two special administrative regions, Macau and Hong Kong. I'm hoping my trip will help me better understand what it is all about, and what impact integration will have on Hong Kong. It's a journey of about 100 kilometers between Hong Kong and Guangzhou City. On the high-speed rail, it takes me just about 40 minutes to get there. This high-speed train began operations in 2018, and it has proven a popular ride. There are 38 daily trains from Hong Kong to Guangzhou. On average, over 40,000 passengers make this trip from Hong Kong daily, and alight at either Shenzhen or Guangzhou, where I'm meeting someone who makes this trip once a week. Hi, Julian. Hi, Li Hao. Li Hao. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thirty-four year old Julian Lau was born in Hong Kong. He went to university in the city. Two years ago, the Hong Kong apparel manufacturing company he worked for wanted to expand into the Greater Bay Area, and Julian volunteered to spearhead the growth. So, he uprooted and relocated to Guangzhou. Thank you. Wow, Julian now lives in Guangzhou during the work week, returning to Hong Kong only on weekends. And increasingly, there are others like him who have come in search of greener pastures. 如果說說工科的學業,現在在國內相對來說應該是會比較多機會對比香港的話,香港就可能都主力是在金融這方面 Hong Kong regularly ranks among the world's most expensive cities to live in there, the average housing in prime locations can cost 
four to five times more than in Guangzhou. Higher costs of living are not the only thing that's ailing the city. It's in pretty dire state. Uh, Hong Kong has had a lost half decade. Uh, between 2019 and 2023, the Hong Kong economy actually shrank in three of those five years. Uh, first because obviously of the protests in 2019, then during COVID, 2020 and 2022, the Hong Kong economy shrank. Mm -hmm. Growth last year was just slightly over 3%, mm -hmm. but, which seems all right, but if you take into account the fact that in 2022, the year before, the economy had shrunk 3.5%. Mm -hmm. uh, so growth last year was hardly satisfactory. And this year, the forecast for the Special Administrative Region's GDP growth lies between 2.5 and 3.5 percent. In contrast, Guangdong's growth target is set above 5 percent. The last three, four decades, uh, the Hong Kong economy has essentially become a lot more concentrated in a few key services, financial services, business services, tourism, of course, as well as real estate. And of course, all these services were incredibly dependent on demand from, from China. Uh, and when the Chinese economy slows, uh, you can see the effects, the slowdown in Hong Kong pretty immediately. With the Greater Bay Area integration, Hong Kong's future will be even more inextricably linked to the mainland. But what exactly is the Greater Bay Area Economic Zone? So the Great Bay Area, the full name is actually called Guangdong, Hong Kong and Macau Greater Bay Area. This is the area with a population 86 million. So the combined economy for these 11 cities is roughly about US $2 trillion, as large as the Italian economy. This is one of the most dynamic, vibrant and the prosperous region in China. It's also one of the key China's economic powerhouse. The Greater Bay Area was first mooted in 2017. Later, in 2019, the Chinese government published an outlined development plan. It set out a roadmap for the region, including building science and innovation capacity, as well as infrastructure and transport links throughout the region. But the Guangdong area is already an economic powerhouse. It is China's richest province by total GDP and the country's top innovation hub. So, how does Hong Kong fit into the Greater Bay Area? The idea is basically the whole is more than the sum of the parts, you know. Uh, through complementing each other, the whole area will grow faster and bigger. Our most unique advantages are our rule of law based on the common law system and our connectivity with the rest of the common law world. Mm. Our international character, mm. you know, and our culture, mm. you know, our ability to cro cross cultural frontiers very smoothly mm. and talk to the West, you know. Mrs. Regina Yip, a well-known figure in Hong Kong politics, is a staunch believer in the Greater Bay Area project. Now, as you said, Hong Kong can contribute to the Greater Bay Area, but does the Greater Bay Area need Hong Kong? I think it contributes impact, competition, and complementarity. We also help the Bay Area cities mm -hmm. to improve their service economy to a higher level. For example, you know, they have the resources we don't have. They have labour, they have land. The high-speed rail I took to visit Julian is an example of the improved connectivity. Part of what the government calls a one-hour living circle, where major hubs of the Greater Bay Area are accessible by an hour or less of commute. They will be in Hong Kong. 但會在廣州或者深圳都居住,因為譬如他們都同我說,他們坐10分鐘高鐵就可以回到香港市區。With this better infrastructure links, people might find it possible to live in one part of the Greater Bay Area and commute to 
the economic centre, say Shenzhen or Hong Kong or Guangzhou. And in this respect, I, I must say that the progress has been reasonably impressive. Integration is also happening at the administrative level. Currently, Hong Kongers like Julian need a home return permit to travel to and from the mainland. But Chinese systems do not recognize the Hong Kong permit as a form of identification, limiting their access to mainland services like faster immigration clearance. Guangdong wants to change this by 2025 by digitalizing and harmonizing the province's system with Hong Kong's. All these to improve cross-border flows of talent. Yet, listening to Julian, I can't help but wonder, will integration with the Greater Bay Area prove a boon for Hong Kong? Or is the SAR staring at obsolescence? I continue my journey to find out. From Guangzhou, the capital city of Guangdong province, I head off to another city in the Greater Bay Area. Please take all your belongings and point to the gap. For Shan, some 33 kilometers away from Guangzhou. According to the Guangzhou Metro, the region will have 7,500 kilometers of rail networks by 2035, about the distance from Beijing to Frankfurt. Other forms of transportation are also being built. Many large-scale or cross-border infrastructure has been put into operation. For example, the Guangdong, Macau, Hong Kong Bridge, as well as Guangzhou, Shenzhen and Hong Kong high-speed railway. So I think that the operation of these two large transportation infrastructure will be helped to strengthening uh, Hong Kong's international connectivity as well as connectivity with the mainland. So that is the key, right? Because when we're talking about Hong Kong as an international financial hub and shipping hub, the connectivity is crucial. We call that agglomeration effects. When you've got a larger, more connected market, you get bigger economies of scale, you get bigger economies of scope, you get a more diversified economy, you get talent interacting and working more closely with one another in this inter more integrated uh, economic region. So it's, I think it's hard to dispute or argue against those benefits. Each zone of the Greater Bay has a specialty. Guangzhou is the political and economic centre. Shenzhen is known for high-tech R&D and manufacturing. Macau, tourism and leisure. Hong Kong is, of course, the finance and trade hub. As for Foshan, it thrives on manufacturing. It is also rich in Chinese cultural heritage. This is Foshan Ancestral Temple, a significant landmark in the city. It was built in the years around 1078. Foshan is a major cultural city, home to Cantonese opera. The birthplace of Kung Fu folk hero Wang Fei Hong and Lion Dance. I'm in Foshan to meet a prominent captain of the industry in Lion Dance. The Hong Kong master Ha Ta Kin is the third generation owner of the family business set up in 1924. Two decades ago, he wasn't convinced by the potential in southern China. Because 
。咁你諗下，我哋話如果你你幾百蚊去舞台師咧，根本揾唔到食。At the time of the 1997 handover of Hong Kong to Chinese rule, China was growing but still poor. Its GDP then is about 18 times less than it is today. Meanwhile, Hong Kong was a prosperous global city. But in the next two decades, the Chinese economy would go on a tear, catching up to Hong Kong. Master Ha's son began to see the potential in the mainland. 其實咧，香港嘅發展咧，誒、呃，你話個增長幅度咧，其實就唔會太多嘅，反而國內嘅發展咧，可能係一日千里，所以佢嘅發展嘅力量咧係好驚人嘅。咁相信我哋嘅投放嘅資源啦，或者係用嘅人手咧，都會以大灣區為重。In 2019, despite his father's misgivings, they opened a lion dance school in Foshan, aimed at school kids. 可能講緊一間學校咧，得幾百人嘅啫，盡曬都可能係二三百人左右。咁但係呢度咧，講緊一間學校有七千人喎。咁你見到嗰個發展就已經唔同啦。The Lion Dance is the mainstay of Chinese celebrations. The loud and colourful spectacle is often encountered at the opening of businesses. So, in a way, the demand for Ha's services tracks with how quickly the economy is growing. More new businesses, more lion dances. Not talking about one group. We are talking about five or six groups. Then they go to different places. Not until the evening, not until the people are tired, they are still not walking through the mall. So these are the things that are happening in foreign developments. Now the mall is really so popular. It became a little bit of a shock in Hong Kong. Hong Kong actually has been able to adjust a little bit. How did this part of southern China develop so rapidly? During the reforms of the Deng Xiaoping era, Shenzhen and Zhuhai were designated as two of four special economic zones in China. These zones had more liberal free market policies and were friendlier to trade and investment. In time, this economic zone would expand to include seven other Chinese cities in Guangdong, becoming the Pearl River Delta Economic Zone. With the addition of Hong Kong and Macau, this would now be known As the Greater Bay Area. If you sp speak to Hong Kongers,、uh, I think many of them feel that oh, this is just something that was already going on, the Pearl River Delta,、uh, which had already become very vibrant as a, and very dynamic as a manufacturing center, and Shenzhen was already emerging as the Silicon Valley of China. So what you know? So you did you really need this、mm -hmm. rebranding? So it is quite legitimate to say that whether the plan, the GBA plan, has. Actually, change anything. Regardless, Lion Dance troupe owner Ha King Mun feels his gamble has paid off. In 2022, his Lion Dance school in Foshan had 100 students. By 2024, King Mun has 600 students, and he wants more. 就喺大湾区嘅发展咧，就真系可以即系无限咁大嘅空间。咁啊，其實我哋除咗而家喺佛山啦，咁我哋嚟緊咧，就可能會喺廣州啊，即係一路落去，希希望喺成個大灣區裏面咧，都有我哋嘅團隊嘅嘅發展。From Foshan, I head to another manufacturing region, Dongguan. There's a Hong Kong company here that saw the potential of the Pearl River Delta early. H C Lee runs Dongguan Shunhing Plastics. A manufacturer of industrial plastic molds. Lee's father set up the company in Hong Kong in 1984, and in 1994 opened a factory in Dongguan. Some China believe、um, they need better goods, so they need to move on. Then they need to come to China to work because it's not on,、uh, all about politics, but it's about they need to survive. They need to grow the company, and Hong Kong is not. Enough for them to grow,、yeah. so they will come to China. Since the early days of reform, this was the common business model for Hong Kong and the mainland. Hong Kong as the export and financial hub, while manufacturing was sited on the mainland with its abundant land and cheap labor. It is a model that is still common today. 
And another very good example is our airport authority. They wanted to build a logistic center, but land development is very expensive in Hong Kong. So instead of developing in Hong Kong, they bought 40 acres of land of Dongguan and built a logistic center there so they can ship directly from Dongguan, the manufacturing centers there, to our airport. That's another good example of how we complement each other. Hong Kong is a small island economy without any hinterland or resource. So for Hong Kong to prosper, Hong Kong can tap on the innovation resource in Shenzhen as well as manufacturing power or the capacity in Dongguan or Zhongshan. For Li, Hong Kong's status as an international finance centre is also an advantage. Because we use, use US dollars and then that is very good for us to do business with the Western. Because that's why we, a lot of companies in Shenzhen, even though they're not from Hong Kong, they will set up a company in Hong Kong to get the cash for US dollars and then do the transaction to, from, US to, from Hong Kong to China. From Dongguan, I head to the roots of the Greater Bay Area. Shenzhen. By 2017, the once sleepy fishing village became a sprawling metropolis, its economy overtaking Hong Kong's. While Shenzhen is home to some of China's largest tech titans like Huawei, Tencent and BYD, the ecosystem has also birthed a slew of smaller firms such as South Star Technology. The company produces vacuum glass used in construction and household appliances industry. Vincent Leong is in charge of finance and marketing. This year, Guangdong will invest some 350 billion renminbi, roughly 54 billion US dollars, to improve its transport networks. 第一件事就是以前交通部分發達,周不時可能上一上來,譬如說跟交通部分合作傾一下,去啲廠那裡看看,可能你要留一天、兩天、五天那種。現在不同,現在交通發達了,可能朝早上晏晝都可以回來,可
is the founder of a private fund management company. The company manages about 10 billion renminbi or about 1.4 billion US dollars. When Li was looking to expand the business, he cast his gaze east, across the Zhujiang River, to Hong Kong. In 2020, Li bought a Hong Kong asset management company. It had some 10 million US dollars under management. But more importantly, the company had the international financial licenses that Li wanted. What do you think is Hong Kong's unique selling point? How does it contribute to the Greater Bay Area? Tiao and it is this status as a global city that makes Hong Kong unique in the Greater Bay Area. The island is the world's fifth most competitive economy, compared to China at 14. As a founding member of the World Trade Organization, Hong Kong has virtually no trade barriers compared to the mainland. And it has long been a magnet for global talent in finance and trade. Hong Kong has literally hundreds of years of experience with global institutions. It's not easy to learn that. So in that regard, I think, yes, the Greater Bay Area also needs Hong Kong. So the Greater Bay Area is a very important social experiment globally because it puts together two jurisdictions. WTO, World Trade Organization, has a jurisdiction for Hong Kong, another one for China. So that's the beauty, but also the challenge. The beauty is that because of the two jurisdictions, it puts together two currencies, two different uh, uh, monetary regimes. It's a, a laboratory, but we don't know how successful it will be because of these challenges. But is Hong Kong losing its luster as a global city? July 1st, 2019, Hong Kong. It was the city's annual pro-democracy march, and I was filming and reporting about it from Wan Chai. It started as a peaceful march of between 200,000 to 500,000 people, according to various reports. By evening, it had descended into chaos. The Legislative Council building was stormed and protesters clashed with police. What followed were months of unrest. It was a watershed moment in the history of Hong Kong. In 2020, the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, the legislative arm of the Chinese government, passed the National Security Law in Hong Kong. It was created in response to the 2019 demonstrations with sweeping powers to criminalize secession, subversion, terrorism and collusion with external parties. It would have a chilling effect on Hong Kongers. After the enforcement of the national security law in 2020, we do see there's quite a large number of the Hong Kong, we call the middle class or professional community athletes, uh, immigrate to any other country, for example, the United Kingdom. 
according to the UK Home Office. Between January 2021 and January 2023, some 145,000 Hong Kong people moved to the UK. Tens of thousands also left for Canada and Australia. The middle class and professional, uh, the community, they are moved out with their capital, with their knowledge, uh, with their information. So that will could have potentially, you know, have a long-term severe impact for Hong Kong. And then, another shock. In March 2020, Hong Kong closed all borders as the COVID-19 pandemic began. Tethered to China's zero COVID policy, which was some of the world's strictest and longest quarantine regimes in place, the lockdown sorely tested Hong Kong's status of a global city. It's one thing for the mainland to pursue zero COVID, and, you know, because it can be more or less self-sufficient. But Hong Kong being an international centre, it was clearly not viable. Hong Kong's links with the rest of the world suspended. Uh, Hong Kong was essentially closed for business for most of the pandemic. Uh, and, and it's resulted in this slow recovery. Thailand is so mobile and COVID has helped us become more mobile as individuals, as, as uh, professionals. And they just fly in and out. But the challenge in Hong Kong is magnified because Hong Kong is such an expensive city and therefore the, you know, the forces out are so big. In a 2021 survey by the American Chamber of Commerce, four in ten expats said they wanted to leave Hong Kong. Of these, about six in ten cited the national security law as the reason. Then, in March 2024, Hong Kong passed Article 23 of the Basic Law. Article 23 covers treason, secession, sedition, and subversion against China. It also allows closed-door trials. With Article 23 seen as an extension of the 2020 legislation, could this be another push factor? We see that after the national security law has been implemented, as well as you know, the recent the law passed for the Article 23, we have seen that the actually uh, quite a number of Western business community or the Western firms, for example, the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times, has already announced they will move out from Hong Kong and relocate to any other place. I think the foreign enterprises who have some anxiety about security, yeah. they already set up the, the system to cope with uh, the national security law enacted by Beijing mm -hmm. in uh, mid-2020, mm -hmm. four years ago. I have seen waves of emigration in the past 50 years. Hong Kong people have always come and go. We have all sorts of waves of emigration. You know? So there's no question of any permanent brain drain. Moreover, we are getting plenty of uh, replenishment from mainland China mm -hmm. and from other parts of the world. So um, I don't think we need to worry about brain drain. The Hong Kong government has launched measures to attract overseas talent. In 2023, the city's two-year plan for high-income workers and top university graduates have attracted some 10,000 applicants, mostly from China, including Li. Yes, I was to the Hong Kong government and then in year, I got a decision. But at the same time, 去年年底的时候，香港也推出高才计划，然后呢，我也进行了同时申请。当时我得到了香港的优才和高才两个计划的批准，最终呢，我是以优才进入香港的，拿到香港的身份证。The talent admission scheme is for foreign nationals with job offers from Hong Kong, while the quality migrant admission scheme lets skilled individuals settle in Hong Kong without securing a job. When Hong Kong launched its talent attraction scheme, I think at the end, by the end of the year, it had approved more than 800,000 professionals, talents, right? Uh, and of that, I think 90% were from the mainland, yes. were, from, were from China. Mm -hmm. and I think, I suspect, uh, the bulk of them, probably the majority, would be from, you know, Guangdong province. 
Hong Kong's openness could face challenges in other ways. As it further integrates with the mainland, it will be increasingly susceptible to U.S.-China tensions. Particular, the U.S. ban on the so-called export of high-tech products to China will have an impact on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, given that many of these Chinese high-tech companies actually list in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Because很多在香港的一些金融机构 However, the Greater Bay Area's economy is huge. It is worth some 1.9 trillion US dollars, almost the size of Italy's. Potentially, making up for the vagaries Hong Kong suffers from stormy US and China relations. Huge internal market about Great Bay Area will provide Hong Kong's business uh, with buffer uh, as well as its uh, opportunity to assess. So that will help to, you know, to bring further vibrancy or the boost, right, or the impetus for the Hong Kong's development in terms of capital market as well as the financial market in general. From Zhuhai, I head back to Hong Kong. It's time to hear what Hong Kongers feel about becoming more closely intertwined with southern China. From Zhuhai, I'm headed back to Hong Kong. Now, within the Greater Bay Area, I've taken the high-speed train, I've taken the expressways by driving, and now I've got one more way to experience the Greater Bay Area's connectivity, the high-speed ferry. My whirlwind tour of the mainland portion of the Greater Bay Area. Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Dongguan, Foshan, Zhuhai, in just four days or so, never really felt hectic, thanks to the one-hour living circle promise of the economic zone. But now, finally back on the island, I meet Clara Lee, a young Hong Konger. At 25, Clara was born after Hong Kong's handover to China, never quite experiencing Hong Kong's days as a British colony. She's currently a final year undergraduate in the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. There was a time when Hong Kong graduates would only want to work in Hong Kong. But now, you know, yourself and maybe your friends, they don't mind looking towards the Greater Bay Area. Why? Clara's view reflects a changing trend among the youth in Hong Kong. In surveys done by the Hong Kong Guangdong Youth Association, only one in five youths were willing to live and work in the mainland in 2020. By 2023, this number has tripled. And it is a sentiment shared by Clara and her friends. To you, what does the Greater Bay Area mean? What, what do you understand about the Greater Bay Area? 
，就代表文化融合啊，跟住傳承再發展嘅意義咯。對於我嚟講，譬如話我哋睇到而家中山啊、珠海都有一啲大學城，同埋一啲可能喺。誒內地北方啊，一啲嘅分校區，咁呢啲模擬係令到我哋香港嘅本地嘅唔同各個高校機構同佢哋合作更加緊密。而家都有好多人就係會鼓吹就話上翻去珠海啊，上去深圳嗰度發展。咁我覺得人才呢個嘅流動啦，係呢個 Greater Bay Area 其中一個最緊要嘅一個點咯。Do you think Hong Kong will lose its identity if it integrates to the Greater Bay Area？ 我有啲係攞咗香港身份證嘅一啲嘅內地嘅學生咁樣啦。咁咧，佢哋係會同我溝通嘅時候，佢哋係唔識講廣東話啦。咁我覺得語言已經係一個你象徵你嘅身份一個好重要嘅一個元素啦。就係佢哋唔識講廣東話。咁另外就係咧，佢哋係有好多香港嘅文化都唔知啦。即係例如可能香港啊，即係中上環，佢哋係可能係唔知邊個周星馳。咁我呢個好大問題啦！呼籲香港政府咧，可以唔單止宣傳自己嘅獨特嘅文化嘅資源咧，都要諗一諗點樣去即係整合翻自己嘅獨特性。其實香港開埠以嚟已經係一個國際城市，即係無論係殖民時期定係而家，只不過佢全球化嗰個傾向唔一樣。但近幾年我哋睇到呢個國際化都係面向灣區發展，呢個方面會我哋重新去諗翻，究竟香港人啊作為一個 global city 嘅一啲 citizens， 我哋應該點樣去啊 ，I mean refine 呢個 concept 嚇。For the business community in the Greater Bay Area. The unique role of Hong Kong is undeniable. Hong Kong, 目前嚟講咧，都係全世界第三大嘅即係誒吸誒吸引資金嘅地嘅平台。咁所以變咗嚟講咧，誒如果喺香港上市嘅話咧，我哋覺得咧係容易啲，因為我哋適應咗誒外國嗰邊嘅個所謂即係誒要求或者個步伐。咁變咗我哋係比較幸運啲咧，就係誒可以較早咧建立到我哋嘅所謂誒銀行嘅體系。咁我依家膽講一樣嘢咧，就我哋香港銀行體系咧，就其實係非常之完善嘅。So if Hong Kong lose that kind of the competitive edge, right? We just mentioned that means that Hong Kong cannot contribute much for the national development or the Great Bay Area development, or just become, you know, very normal the Chinese city. So that means the mainland, the Great Bay Area, will not need Hong Kong anymore. And as for Hong Kong's government. They are committed to the Greater Bay Area project. This July marks Hong Kong Chief Executive John Lee's second year in office. Closer Greater Bay Area ties are a key part of his manifesto. And with roughly 50 million square meters of residential floor space built in Guangdong each year, being part of the GBA brings more than just financial gain. If you look at Hong Kong for the last decade or so, maybe more, uh, the main complaint is living space is, is limited, housing. So to the extent that the GBA can promote, facilitate ease, people movement, make it possible for people to live in one part of the GPA, commute to other parts for education, for work. It is not a bad proposition. And that's exactly what's happening. Hong Kongers are going to the Greater Bay Area, but that's uh, creating a hollowing out of Hong Kong services because uh, the services now, even a hairdresser, are tradable. I mean, I can take the train, I go to Shenzhen. And that is creating a problem for the hairdressers in Hong Kong. It's 20 minutes to get to Shenzhen. So, you know, it, this connectivity is a plus down the road, no doubt, but it has a transition effect, which is negative for Hong Kong. 2035 is often touted as the date when the vision of a fully integrated Greater Bay Area will be realized. By then, it will be just 12 more years till 2047, and the end of one country, two systems. Hong Kong's unique selling point has been as the bridge between China and the West. Even as it becomes integrated into the Greater Bay Area, the one country, two system policy is Hong Kong's competitive edge. If Hong Kong is assimilated with the Greater Bay Area, 
what will happen to its status as a special administrative region then. Chairman Xi already said that one country, two system should continue beyond 2047 because it is a good system. So we need to promote greater integration, helping each other, you know, within the uh, framework of one country, two systems. So Hong Kong may have two futures uh, in the Greater Bay Area. One is to be fully integrated to the mainland, and at least to the Greater Bay Area, and the other one is to continue to act as a fortress of arbitrage, uh, as a middleman between the West and China. But I keep that door open, double jurisdiction at WTO, a different currency, different uh, monetary regime, different tax system. So why would China give up on something so useful? For me, it's very obvious. The one country, two system will remain. In the end, whether the Greater Bay Area is opportunity or obsolescence for Hong Kong may depend on the people of the special administrative region themselves. Mm -hmm. 肯定要保留一些自己的文化,但其實有時候你是抵擋不住一些外來或新來的文化的影響,所以你都要學習怎樣去融合 Hong Kong star is diminished, it's not because of GBA, it's because for the last 30-40 years it never really invested sufficiently in those capabilities. It is now rather belated, putting that as a policy priority. Hong Kong must also upgrade A, its capabilities and must make itself relevant. Hong Kong comes with ideas from the rest of the world. Hong Kongers travel the world. They have a capital of convertibility there. They have their own jurisdiction, more open than China. They have a Western counting standards, things that make investors very comfortable. But Hong Kong needs to come with the idea. That's the point. And for that, you need a lot of creative thinkers in Hong Kong. Are we there now? No, we're not there now. Can we be there? Yes, we can be there.